Hi everybody, uh, it's time for us to get started. I am Sue Dengenis, the Director of Marketing for Synchro Software. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today's webinar is how to lead a progress review meeting using Synchro Pro. And uh, we did have to reschedule this topic, so I apologize. But uh, again, thanks for joining us today for this uh, really important topic. Um, before we get started, I just want to quickly mention uh, we do have some training courses coming up in Boston, Berkeley, California, and in London. We have a one-day fundamentals course and a two-day intermediate advanced course. Um, they are led by uh, John's team and um, they're really fantastic. So if you have the opportunity, um, if anybody in your organization wants to register for those, you can do so from the home page of our website. Uh, I will introduce John Burko. He is our Director of Project Delivery Services. His team is based out of Berkeley, but they um, are also in the London office uh, over in England. Uh, John is a 25 plus year veteran of Bechtel. He was a principal engineer and manager of the VDC department there. He has both a bachelor's and, and uh, master's degrees in mechanical engineering from MIT. And um, he's got a great topic today. So John, you ready to get started? I am, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna get started and uh, welcome everybody. Um, I wanted to just uh, talk about a topic that I think is uh, really important for enabling um, not only real power out of Synchro, real powerful use, but also engaging uh, the project managers and management team that may not be involved in the day-to-day -day use of the software or the day-to-day -day use of BIM, but need to use this information for their decision-making. I wanted to start off with a, uh, a brief introduction. There we go. And I'm going to start off with a brief introduction um, with a few slides and then go into a brief demo in Synchro. Um, and one of the key things that I wanted to uh, mention and first ask is for people on the phone that are using Synchro, um, I'd be interested in hearing from you as to how you use Synchro in conducting a project uh, meeting, um, if you use it for conducting progress reviews and, and how you do it. Um, the point of this presentation is to really encourage people to, to use Synchro in a live format with the program, with the software, um, in it, as opposed to just running uh, uh, videos that are produced as exported from the software. Videos are great. I'm not putting down videos, but um, to really get the maximum value out of the software in progress review meeting, um, you want to run it live. Uh, now that requires some more challenges um, and preparation, and that's the point of the presentation is to just kind of give a very high level um, overview and examples of doing just that. Um, the key thing here is that a project management team's ability to make decisions is really dependent on being well informed in a timely manner. Um, and I believe that the visual environment that Synchro, Synchro presents for all the data that's included enables that process to happen. Um, the typical project, as all of you know, involves a lot of decision making and for those of you who are project managers or are part of a project management team, um, you're involved in that on literally a daily basis. And decision making is a stressful uh, activity. Um, it, it is a stressful activity. So in my experience in working with a lot of project managers um, on large, complex jobs, um, I frequently have asked the question about, you know, what keeps you awake at night? What's, what causes the most concern? And it really it comes down to risk and certainty of outcome. It, it's when there's understanding of what's coming down the line to the best degree possible, that creates a real calm sense of progress in the project. Um, when there's a sense that things might not be right or something's gonna go wrong, it really causes a lot of anxiety and causes the possibility of poor decision making. And I think that's a key background to take away here is that think about Synchro as the way to create the sense of calm that will lead to good decisions and um, good execution on the job. Um, so a calm and confident project manager looks something like this. And this is a real project. And there's Synchro in the background. And they're using Synchro for, in this case, their purpose is, is, a, is a digital rehearsal planning. But the point is that having Synchro working well is enabling this guy who's the project manager to communicate with his team and have a clear mutual understanding about the next phase of work that's going to be done and how it's going to be done. 
So really, the, the first key step is to understand and consider the goals for the meeting. And that's going to require some teamwork and some collaboration with people that are involved in the meeting, is what do we want to accomplish in the meeting given the time that we have to do it. And that's a key thing to do because there's a lot of information contained within Synchro as well as all the other schedule and model data that can be brought into a meeting. And so it's important to prepare properly. Preparation is the key to success. We've developed an infographic that shows um, a wide array of uses for 4D throughout a project lifecycle, um, starting from the very beginning of importing and, mo and linking model data to schedule and going all the way through the life cycle to the point of construction completion. Um, so it's important to kind of consider all these things that can be done with Synchro. And um, I tend to look at kind of the middle area as the sweet spot because that's where there's a huge increase in value over initial model construction and model development to implementation on the job. Um, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this slide, but I do want to mention that there are different uh, objectives that can be accomplished in a meeting separately or together that can be really important to the decision-making process of the project management team. This is probably the most important slide uh, that I'm going to show. It's a very simple one, but it's very important. And that is, what are the three essential ingredients to a successful meeting beyond the model itself. The first one is you need a synchro, what I call the synchro driver. You need somebody that is running synchro, the 4D planner, the, the, the synchro modeler in the meeting. But that person is, is, is not a good choice to be the person to lead the meeting. The meeting needs to be led by somebody that's either a superintendent or one of the managers that wants to communicate what's in the model to everybody in the group and be able to conduct a collaborative session without worrying about making changes to the model. This person can point to the or talk to the person that's, that's driving the model to pull up different information or make certain changes. But what happens is when somebody who's actually running the model tries to run the meeting, it almost always ends in disaster and people get disenchanted with the whole process and drop it. So it's really important to have these two, um, these two individuals as part of the meeting. And finally, Another key thing is really presentation technology. I've heard time and time again about people running meetings where you know, the screen size is too small or the video quality is not good or the response time and the Wi-Fi is not good. All this stuff has to work well and uh, that's another really important thing that we have to consider. So in starting, uh, before I get into the demo, I want to just go over uh, just a kind of a thought process here of what I'd call a basic 4D play. If you're conducting a review, um, what, what's, the, what's one of the basic things you would do with Synchro? Um, you would think about what set of tasks is planned in the upcoming schedule for the work. Um, it could be a subcontractor scope. It could be an area. It could be an issue related to um, where material is being delivered. It could be a physical area of the project. That list could go on. Um, and what we want to do is visualize these resources that are associated with the tasks and think about certain questions that we could ask and have answered in the meeting. Do we have everything we need? Uh, is the crane in the right position? Have all the resources been delivered? This list can go on. And then what we want to do is be prepared to visualize the sequencing of the tasks for that scope and be able to answer certain very important questions quickly and accurately, such as, you know, can this be done within the schedule that we've allocated? Um, or somebody might say, take me to a certain date and show me where we're at or where we're supposed to be at. Or is there enough space to perform this work, et cetera. And we want to continue this process um, throughout the scope of work that's going to be done and do this collaboratively to the point where the project manager or the leader of the meeting can ask everybody and say, does everybody agree with this plan? Are we validated? Are we in agreement? And that's the goal, is to get everybody's head nodding at the end of that meeting based on the information they've seen and the way the meeting's been conducted. So I wanted to just talk about, there's, there's many tool sets in Synchro that are really valuable in producing information for a meeting like this. I just wanted to talk about a few of them that I consider to be really um, extremely useful and also very easy to incorporate in the preparation of the meeting. Um, and I'll demonstrate some of these. The first one is viewpoints. I think of these as Synchro's time-space travel devices. 
These, when they're set up, can take you to where you want to go at the time you want to be there instantly. And so having these set up saves not only a lot of time, but is very effective to engaging the group. The second one is filters. I'm sure everybody uses filters all the time. I think of these as the instant interrogation tool, where it's a way to extract the information you need to see um, in the form you need to see it from what could be a huge visual uh, amount of information on the screen. This extracts what you need and puts it on. Synchronization. Um, I think about this as really kind of one of the magical parts of Synchro. It's uh, something that in preparation allows you to compare uh, the actual state of the schedule or the latest plan to previous uh, schedules and visualize these in uh, a comparative manner that can really um, provide quick understanding about what's going on uh, compared to what was supposed to go on. Um, and synchronization is, is a very sophisticated capability, but Synchro has made it very easy to do, and so that's really important. Uh, the fourth one is really uh, kind of obvious, but the ability to open multiple windows and look at things side by side or top to bottom. Um, humans love to see visual comparison. It's, a, it's probably the easiest way to digest information is to visualize things uh, uh, in a comparative manner in one place. It, it creates a quick understanding that really cannot be achieved in any other way. So think about that. Um, think about the windows in Synchro. And finally, for this particular slide, uh, animations, obviously animating a sequence is an important thing, one of the most important things that you do in Synchro, you do in 4D in general. Um, and think about it as a storyboarding process or directing a movie, using the animations to then play out what you've discussed to confirm that everybody's in agreement on how it's being played out. Um, and if you need to, of course, you can export the animations and do that in a format that's going to give you a visual quality that would be better than what you have in the session, because in the session you probably don't want to use all the highest enhancements of all the visualizations, but when you export it, you could. So let's go to uh, Synchro. Give it a couple of seconds to open up on everybody's screen. This is a large project. Uh, it's a development project, and um, this, this project obviously has all your model data and, and schedule data uh, included. And uh, what I am showing on the screen now is just all the 3D data that's been imported and in part of the model. Um, and we have uh, part of the uh, activity list and Gantt chart is also showing. So what I wanted to do is just go through some of the things I've talked about. Uh, the first thing I'll do is uh, I'll turn off some of the surrounding site so that the model is a little more uh, agile. Um, some of that, a lot of that information is necessary, so it's good to it's good to open the meeting up to show the entire project to provide context so that everybody people if people have not been following it closely, it will enable them to see and get acquainted with the project very quickly. So rather than get into a very small part of the job, uh, that's the area of focus initially, I think it's a good idea to kind of show the whole project and then uh, move on from there. So if we go to the navigator and go to viewpoints, um, I'm just going to activate in the selected view here. Um, again, this is the use of a viewpoint, and now I'm going to an area of the project that's important for this particular discussion, which is going to be um, an area of uh, of the building we call uh, Block H. Um, and so what I want to do now is uh, move the focus time to the data date. And the data date is the current date of the project. Um, and at this current date, this is the state of the project for this area. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to go to the uh, set of tasks quickly that uh, represent the construction of that area. So Synchro has a nice tool, which you probably all use, which is find, just really literally the find tool is a very powerful tool. And I want to find the uh, set of tasks related to um, block H, uh, the concrete construction in block H. And I'll just scroll up a little bit. OK. Scroll over a little bit. OK. So this sequence of tasks is the construction of the uh, concrete and columns in block H. And what I want to do is to be able to, the purpose of this meeting would be to evaluate the sequencing of this set of work. Okay. 
So uh, what I want to do is I'm going to go to my resources panel and one of the things I'm curious about is to actually see uh, the resources that are have been um, included in the assignments to these tasks. So I'll select the assignment. So what's, what's useful, and this doesn't necessarily always come up, but if people are in the room that have actually uh, developed the 3D model, the, the CAD BIM model that's used in Synchro, this is, an ability, this is a quick way to see all the objects in that model that have been assigned to the tasks on the schedule. Um, so if the discussion comes up regarding that, it's very easy to identify those tasks. Then what I can do is quickly in the screen, I can just right click and go filter, and I'm going to create a filter from the selected tasks. And I'll just call it block H construction set. Okay. So now I've quickly created a filter in the uh, set of tasks and uh, we'll go here and then when I go back to my navigator view and to 3D sets I see that this uh, filter is now in the list and if I click on it I'm now seeing the uh, uh, only the objects at that particular time of the focus time uh, for that uh, block H and if I want to start from the beginning of block H, I'll go back to the beginning of this slab, or I could also go to task quickly and just hit go to start of task, and that puts me kind of at the beginning of block H here. And then if I want to just, uh, we want to quickly review um, the sequencing of the construction in block H, we'll just do that. And you can imagine selecting pretty much any part of a project, and I think it's a great way to quickly isolate and then play for people without a lot of the complicated background. Okay. Notice also that the viewpoint has allowed it so that um, I've been prepared so that the, for the most part, this area is fully in view in the way that I want people to see it. I'll just stop it. Okay, so I'll clear it. Now, what's the use, another useful thing to do when you have the opportunity here is to just quickly um, grab all this. And what I like to do is uh, basically a very simple thing is to identify, is to create a different color. Uh, for that section so that whenever it comes up and there's other parts of the, of the model included, I can always see, uh, I can always uh, clearly see based on the color um, this particular area, uh, in this case blockage. So I'll make it orange. And then if I go and uh, turn off my filter and show all, okay, everybody can understand that where blockage is at this point. Okay. So now the next thing I want to do is quickly go to, again, a viewpoint, and I want to look at a view that's going to allow me to compare the state of this project to what it was previously at um, in an earlier schedule. So I've created a view called, uh, I've created a view called Compare Schedules, and it creates a view that is going to work out well for the particular concerns that the project management team has at this particular time. And uh, then what I want to do is, because I'm going to think about comparing schedules, is I'm going to create another window using Windows 3D. And you can create any number of windows. But what's really cool about this is it brings me to the exact same view at the exact same time as my other window. Okay, And what you'll see at the top of each window is both are showing the project at what Synchro refers to as best schedule is the current schedule or the actual schedule, whatever is currently in the setup in the uh, scheduling part, that's what we call best. But what we can do is we can look and see previous schedules that have been saved um, and then synchronized uh, in Synchro. And in this case, we've got three previous schedules. One of them is called the baseline original, and then there's two later ones. What we'll do is we'll just quickly go to the window on the right, and we'll select dates to use, and we'll go to baseline, and what we'll see is the state of the project as it was supposed to be at based on the baseline schedule versus the current schedule. And you can also, on the 
Gantt chart, you can see that on the screen in blue in the Gantt is the baseline schedule and in red is the current schedule. So from a schedule Gantt chart view, I can see the difference between the schedules, but from a visualization side, I can also see the difference in the schedules. Okay. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just kind of move along a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> and what we'll see is that, so this is an earlier schedule. Suppose I want to look at another schedule that was developed at a later time. I just click on it, and you can see that the schedule moved in the Gantt chart. And if I go to the window, and I quickly just reset the baseline, I can see now where the project uh, was planned to be in uh, the September schedule, still significantly ahead of current. And if I go to the October schedule, which is literally only a month, uh, about a month before the current date, I can then see where we're at. And what you can see is even though we're only a month behind when that schedule, a month later than the schedule was created, we're still one floor ahead in the previous schedule than we are now. And so um, from a management standpoint, there's a lot of questions that could be raised, but one of them is, you know, what is going on with our planning that we continue to fall behind? And that's where I think the power of Synchro comes into play. So what we'll do now is go to a... Uh, a, uh, another viewpoint. Okay. And I'm going to close the right window, go back to a single view, and then I want to uh, look at another viewpoint. Okay. And what I've done here is now I'm taking kind of an overview look from a different angle because I want to consider only the slab sequencing for block age as well as the other blocks. And that will enable me to take a look at what's being done uh, through the project and, uh, and possibly make some decisions on how to uh, regain in the schedule. And what you'll notice is that the cool thing about viewpoints is not only do they bring you to a certain view angle, a certain uh, physical space, they also, of course, bring you to a, a specific time that you've saved, but they also will bring you to uh, a, if you've saved a 3D set, in this case, I'm only seeing the slabs, it is allowing me, to, it is also saving my 3D set uh, uh, filtering. So there's a lot of power in those viewpoints that can be saved, and it saves a lot of time in the meeting to have to go back and forth and, and do these things. Um, okay, so then... Uh, We'll do is we just want to play a bit of the animation, and so from a viewing standpoint, I'm able to just an animate. In this case, I'm just animating the slabs, but uh, I'm getting a good overview of uh, the state of the slab construction in the project um, on all the other blocks of the development. Okay. And finally, I'm going to go to another uh, viewpoint, and uh, yeah, and this one here, go here. And now, what I want to do is basically, I'm concluding the meeting, and I want to save um, an, uh, my, an animation essentially that gives me a full understanding of what we've talked about in the meeting, so I can review it later. And what I've done here is go into filters. I've created a custom filter. And filtering is really powerful because, uh, especially with the custom filtering, what I can do is I can do, a, in this case, I'm going to do a look-ahead view of only the slab construction work over the next 28 days or approximately a month from wherever the focus time is. So I'm only going to see the tasks on the Gantt chart that occur over the next 28 days, and I'm only going to see the uh, animating of the, in this case, the slabs and columns, okay? And then when I go to animations, I've created an animation, um, which, is, which is very easy to do. And uh, we'll go to uh, this animation uh, here. Yeah, and we'll just 
hopefully go to the beginning and we'll just play the animation. <clears throat> this is a very simple animation. Um, if I stop for a second, I show the, uh, the editor. All I've really done is a very simple animation. You probably make more complex animations and you can see those as well in our tutorials. But I'm just going to go back and quickly play the animation for a little bit. So what you see is that uh, my filtering is, is enabling me to only show uh, what I'd like to see, which in this case is the, uh, the walls and the slabs and the tasks that are occurring over the next uh, month at any given time which consolidates the Gantt chart to make it very easy to understand um, what we want to see in terms of the schedule. Okay. And then what I'd like to do is uh, stop the animation. Uh, I can, of course, export the animation as well. And we'll just go to the movie. And when you export the animation, of course, you could do a lot more. Hopefully it's uh, showing up on the screen. Um, you're essentially seeing the same thing, but you can do a lot more uh, visual enhancements to an exported animation, which um, is a very good thing to do. And you can also add things like timeline and so forth that complete the story from an animation standpoint. So here we've conducted the progress review meeting, we've produced an animation, and hopefully everybody's in agreement on what we're going to do with uh, Block H uh, for the next coming period of the, uh, of the project. So just going quickly to close my presentation. I want to mention that there's a lot of techniques that I did not cover due to time that are really powerful and I just want to uh, mention a few um, in this slide and there are many more. We've got a playlist that's at the top um, that's available on YouTube that includes actually over 50 workflow videos that show different techniques to, to conduct certain exercises or certain things that you'd like to do with Synchro and it gives you instructive information in the context of of the objective as well. And a few of these on the screen here are really powerful for um, expanding the use of Synchro for progress review meetings, anything from the process of synchronization to creating 3D paths for equipment to the critical aspect of works workspaces um, and the costs and resources, etc. So everybody on this uh, webinar will receive uh, not only the, uh, the webinar itself, which shows this information, but we'll send the link to the workflow video library that will enable you to kind of take your time and go through it. So that being said, I will finish and conclude. I want to thank you for joining the webinar. I hope it was, it was instructive and interesting. Um, I'd love to hear back from people in terms of uh, especially how they run their meetings using Synchro. And if they're not, I'm hoping this will inspire you to, to get into it and start doing it because I think you're going to see the light bulbs go off on your project management team's eyes once they start to see Synchro in their meetings. Does anybody have any questions?